Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. Before we get into it, I want to say thank you so much for clicking on this video and taking the time to watch this review. These videos take a lot of work and a lot of effort and it means a lot that people take time out of their day to actually check them out. So that's very nice of you. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. And with that, let's go ahead and get into this. So what we're looking at is the Zesray Studios LA Comic Con exclusive Katuta the Big Horn. I think that's how you say his name. It's not on the front of the box. It's in here. Ketuta. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's what we're going with. But yes, huge thank you to 5K Toys for sending this out to me to take a look at. I do appreciate it. This thing does look freaking awesome. Starting off with the box, we get some cool looking artwork up front of the character. Over here, we have an LA Comic Con exclusive sticker. On this side of the box, it says LA Comic Con exclusive. On the opposite side, it says combatants fight for glory and then on the back we get some really dope looking comic book style artwork this looks amazing right here and this is a slip cover so let's go ahead and get this off real quick boom oh and there's a look at the figure damn <laughs> that thing looks crazy they, they got some really dope photography on here really cool and we have some more comic book artwork on the side on the back, we have the figure doing his thing, looking badass. And then down here, we have some information about the figure. That's really cool. So we get some, like, backstory on the character. Check out the artwork right there. Really cool. Man, this thing is huge. <laughs> but yeah, enough about the good-looking box here. Let's go ahead and get this big monster out of it and take a look. All right, so here we have the big horn right out of the box. And damn, check this thing out, man. This figure is a straight-up beast. Look at that. I love the design of these things. I think the Zesray Studios has done a great job with the more human, gladiator, and, like, historic type of warriors. They've been killing it with those. But I've got to say, I think they jump up a couple of levels when it comes to, like, bigger, like, more like fantasy inspired monsters because this is the second one of these that I played with and I was really impressed with both of them. I have the one that's all black and we'll get him out in just a minute but I think I like this one better because you're able to see the details a lot more and they just did a great job with the paint, the red and like the different like black washes in there and everything. It looks amazing but man this is a great looking figure and it's got good articulation for such a big bulky character so yeah good stuff i love the design the sculpting work is nice the paint is nice and i like how you could remove all the armor and stuff like that you know like the forearm pieces these are loose the wraps around the lower legs could come off and i did see a picture where the the belt thing came off but i had a hard time you know taking this figure apart in order to get that off of him so um at first i mean basically you could take them apart right here at the waist. But when I first tried to take them apart, that square that's in there came out. And it was just on the ball joint real, real tight. So um, I did, you know, glue it back in there and I put a little bit of oil on the ball joint so it would loosen up a little bit. It kind of reminded me of a Mafex figure because like the joint seemed to get tighter <laughs> the, the more I messed with it. It was weird. But putting a little bit of oil on there, you know, made it all okay, and then securing the little square into the lower torso made it to where it pops apart really easy, and it pops together. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it's not too hard. It was a little difficult at first, but once I kind of messed with it a little bit, now we're all good. But yeah, I like how you could remove everything, and you know, you could use these bodies for customs or whatever you want to do. But yeah, man, they freaking killed it. He's got an articulated mouth which looks really good. That's kind of hard to execute, but they did a great job with it. Yeah, overall, right out of the box, I'm really impressed with this figure. I think they killed it. But let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the awesome detail on him. Man, I really love the design of this guy. And I think that Zesray Studios did an incredible job with all the details on it. This figure looks really, really dope. But starting off here at the head sculpt, I love this design, man. I don't know exactly what this is supposed to be, whether it's like a, a rhino or some type of like wild boar or something. But it looks freaking amazing. Check out this head sculpt. I love the way the colors fade into each other from the black to the red. And I like how this hair kind of looks like a beard <laughs> right here, you know. That is super dope. And I love the way they did the eye too. The eye is kind of like an orange color. And it makes it kind of close to red. So it kind of like fades in there. But once you notice it, it stands out, you know. So that is really dope. And then he does have the bandage right here on the horn. And look at that, man. Such a cool looking character. And then he does have the articulated mouth, 
which is really well done because the figure looks good whether the mouth is open or closed and it doesn't look awkward at all. That's kind of hard to achieve. I think Zestray Studios did a great job with it. Look at that. Boom. You could have him yelling or you could have him mouth closed. Serious tone. Really dope stuff. Man, look at the details on there. So cool. I really love this head sculpt. Man, this thing is badass. And then he does have like uh, the mane, I guess you could call it. And then moving on to the body, you could see they did a great job sculpting all the muscles and stuff. And, you know, they added a lot of nice paintwork so that we could see all the details. Like, I've had the black, one of the black minotaurs longer than this. And, you know, I thought it was a cool figure and stuff, but I couldn't really appreciate all the amazing sculpting work until I saw it on here. Where, you know, they put all these different colors and it kind of makes all this stuff stand out, you know. And then here around the waist, he does have like this belt thing that has some incredible detail. Look at that. We've got these spikes. And I like how these spikes aren't really like rigid, you know. They, they you know, they're not like straight up soft plastic where they're going to warp or anything. But they're not super stiff where it feels like they're going to break. And these things look pretty crazy too. There's all kinds of, you know, chips in the blade. And it definitely looks like these things have uh, seen a lot of action. So yeah, cool stuff, man. And then let's see what else we have going on here. Look at all the details back here, man. This looks so good. And then under there, he does have like some soft goods, which is nice. Nothing major, you know, just some like underwear or a loincloth or something. I don't know. I like how the wrist gauntlets have a bunch of details too. Check these out. Look at that. Some really nice paint work. All kinds of good stuff going on on this guy. Bam, he could backhand forearm or back forearm somebody with these and <laughs> mess them up and then he does have pinless knees check that out that looks good and down here he's got his uh, lower leg wraps and this is a separate piece so you know you could remove it and the feet are wrapped as well and yeah man this is such a great looking figure i love everything about it the design is so cool this thing looks it, it looks insane you know <laughs> definitely uh Definitely a great design and a really well sculpted figure. So yeah, Zestray Studios did a great job with this guy. And then as far as the accessories, the big horn does come with some pretty cool stuff, including three different sets of hands. So first off, we have a pair of fists, and then we have a set of open hands, and lastly, we have a set of gripping hands, and these could be used to hold on to his crazy ass mace weapon that he comes with. And this thing is freaking ridiculous, man. It looks like it would jack somebody up. So this is awesome, and he looks really good holding on to it. So this weapon is super dope. And then he does come with two different sets of feet. He has like a like a more human kind of looking set of feet, so that's cool. And then he comes with a pair of hoofs, and these kind of go a little bit better with the overall theme of the figure, you know, being like a rhinoceros or whatever. So um, these are really cool. I love the fact that he has two different sets of feet. So it kind of gives you like customizing options if you want to do different things. So that is really nice. So now for some size comparisons, we have the big horn alongside the Axie Toys Blood Blade. And then on the opposite side, we have one of the Minotaurs from Zesray Studios. And this guy does use the same body as the big horn. And man, I love the way these two look together. They've done a couple of different figures that use this body, you know, in like different colors or whatever. But to me, the red and the black are by far the best. They just look so striking, you know. They're eye-catching. I love the way they look together. They look like a couple of like you know, war-bound brothers just ready to, like, destroy entire armies by themselves. I just love the vibe of these guys, and man, they look great together. And then next up, we have them alongside the Monster Hide by Loose Collector. That thing is one of my favorite figures of the year. It's absolutely incredible. Huge shout-out to Loose Collector. That dude is a legend. On the opposite side, we have the Marvel Select Planet Hulk. And man, I would love for somebody to give us a new Planet Hulk that had great articulation. All these different companies have shown that... Like, you could fit good articulation into, like, these bigger bodies. So, it would be nice if maybe Diamond Select revisited Planet Hulk and kind of took pointers from these other companies that are doing such great things with bigger bodies and gave us a Planet Hulk that had some insane articulation. And then here we have him alongside one of the Guardians of the Horde. I'm not sure who makes this figure. Like, what company actually put this out? I know that I bought it from 5K Toys, and I freaking love it. One of my favorite figures of the year. On the opposite side, we have the Marvel Legends Drax the Destroyer. And that Drax is one of my favorite Legends of the year because... 
I'm just so happy to finally have a classic Drax. <laughs> Anyways, that has nothing to do with the big horn, but man, look how massive the big horn is next to these guys. Like this figure right here seems like a big figure to me, but <laughs> he looks he looks tiny next to the big horn. And then next up, we have him alongside the PowerCon exclusive Mythic Legions, Demenstros. I think that's how you say his name. I'm never really sure, but I did a review of that figure, so be sure to check that out. Huge shout out to Josh Brown who hooked me up with that. On the opposite side, we have one of the Mythic Legions Ogres. And yeah, I think the Big Horn works really well with Mythic Legions. It works as far as scale and, you know, like thematically. I think they all can exist with each other in the same world it makes sense for something like the big horn to go up against one of these ogres or a random mythic legions figure but man shout out to the four horsemen because i feel like the success of mythic legions really paved the way for these types of figures you know for like the stuff that we've seen from axie toys and zest ray and guardians of the horde all those types of things work really well with mythic legions and i feel like the fans of mythic legions really gravitate to those things so it's really cool man i think the four horsemen paved the way for this type of like you know super detailed articulated fantasy it, it, like subgenre of action figures it's very cool and then next up we have them alongside the zest ray studios roman infantry soldier and then on the opposite side we have the zest ray studios marcus and you know i think zest ray studios is doing a good job with all the stuff that they're putting out like i think these figures came out really nice they they have some great sculpting work they look incredible you know articulation is a little lacking but i think they're good figures but honestly i think the zest ray studios definitely leveled up a couple of levels with these like big crazy monsters these fantasy monsters i think they've done a great job with them and i really hope they lean more into that although i do think they're doing a great job with the more human stuff i think the big fantasy monsters is where it's at Next up, we have them alongside one of the Zest Ray Studios Combatants Fight for Glory figures. I'm not sure the name of this one, uh, but those things are awesome. That's from Wave 1. And then on the opposite side, we have the Mezco Conan. And then here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends 80th Anniversary Thor and the Marvel Legends Hercules. And then last but not least, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Renew Your Vow Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Bucky Cat. Alright, so now for the articulation. I went ahead and removed all of the armor pieces so we could see the full range of the joints. And you know, I've got to say, I think the Zest Ray Studios did a really good job of fitting in as much articulation as possible into this unique body style, you know? I think they did a great job with it. He's definitely a lot of fun to play with. Obviously, it's nothing over the top like a Revil Tech figure or Spider-Man or whatever, but I think considering the design, I think Zest Ray Studios did a pretty respectable job with the articulation, and as a result, I'm having a lot of fun playing around with this guy. But let's go ahead and see what we have going on starting off at the head. So the head is on a ball peg joint, and obviously the head is a very unique <laughs> shape, so it's not going to move like a normal head, but it does move side to side, which is pretty nice. And then it does rotate on that ball joint as well. You could only look up to about right there, so not a whole lot going on. And then it looks down to right there, which is pretty nice. And you could definitely tilt it and do some pretty cool stuff, get some expressive poses out of it. The coolest thing about the articulation on the head area is obviously the articulated jaw. Boom, look at that can open his mouth up a pretty good amount and it looks good when it's open and when it's closed so they did a great job with the mouth but yeah the head you know it's limited but it's to be expected and then for the torso he does have a diaphragm cut and a ball joint at the waist and using both of those we get some nice side to side you can go back to about right there and then it only goes forward only to about right there and I do wish that it was able to go forward more but still this is you know this is pretty good I am pretty happy with that but check this out too if you want to get him to crunch even more you can rotate the lower abdomen and it looks funny like this obviously but if you want to get him to crunch boom look at that <laughs> so that looks dope if you're trying to do something that warrants him being crushed this much you know I mean crunched forward this much but yeah there you go. So that's an option. And it would look weird from, you know, certain angles or whatever. Well, actually not. I mean, the whole lower part that would look weird is kind of covered up. So, you know, that's something you could do. I do wish that he got that much movement going forward just like this, you know. But still, the amount that's there is pretty good. And it's nice that there's workarounds to give it even more movement if you think that's necessary. So there you go. And then for the arms, he does have kind of a unique setup here. It looks like he has a butterfly joint, but it's not really like a normal butterfly joint. Uh, I, I guess the best way to explain it is that there's like a ball peg on the front part here. And that shoulder socket just kind of rotates on there. 
it's not like it's hinged to where like you know it could hinge forward back and forth like a butterfly joint it just kind of rotates on that ball joint but I'm, i mean it does help things out a little bit like you know it, it allows you to kind of move his shoulder area up so you could get his arms above his head that way you could kind of have him holding his weapon above his head you know and that shoulder housing just kind of moves up and helps with that so it's definitely useful but it just kind of caught me by surprise because i was expecting like a normal butterfly joint and it's a little different than normal but still useful look at that so that's pretty dope and as you can see the butterfly or not the butterfly joint the shoulder socket does kind of just rotate on the ball joint that's in there yeah so interesting stuff then aside from that he does have ball joints at the shoulders so his arm could go all the way around and then he does have upper bicep swivel he has a single jointed elbow but it does get pretty good range and it also swivels right there at the wrist he has a ball joint with the hinge so the hand could hinge any direction that you want and then you could rotate on the ball joint there do all kinds of stuff so that's nice and then for the legs he does have ball joints so his leg can kick forward to oh kick forward to right there which is pretty nice you have to kind of rotate it outward a little bit but not so much that it looks unnatural it's still pretty good then you could kick to the side a really nice amount bam so that's pretty good he does have upper thigh swivel kind of it reminds me of like a NECA joint or a Mafex where you know there's a joint on the inside of the thigh there and the thigh does rotate on that joint and it also the inner joint also rotates on the ball joint for the hip so there's two areas where it's kind of moving but there's no like straight up upper thigh cut so you know you're not gonna it's not gonna swivel all the way around or anything but it definitely gets enough movement so that like you know you can make things work so that's nice and then for the knees he has double jointed knees bam look at that that's pretty good then at the foot what do we have here all we have is a hinge the foot could rock side to side go forward to right there come up to right there and no lower leg swivel but yeah good stuff man yeah i think the articulation on this guy is great like i said i've been having a lot of fun playing around with it i think you could get it into some cool poses and there's some like unique things going on here that I haven't seen before. Like this shoulder setup was kind of weird, but it's definitely useful. And yeah, man, this is a really fun figure. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this is a really dope figure. I love the way it looks. It's a very cool looking character. The design is awesome. They did a great job with the sculpting work. There's a whole bunch of details. The paint is nice. I love the different shades of red on the skin. I like all the detail in the armor. I love the crazy looking head sculpt with the articulated mouth. Everything about this figure looks absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, like I said, I love the design. I think these things look so cool the articulation is really nice on this guy obviously he does have a big unique body shape so you know there's only so much you could do but i think zesray studios did a really nice job of putting in as much articulation as they possibly could and as a result i'm having a whole lot of fun posing this guy around you could definitely get him into some dynamic poses which is kind of you know that's kind of rare for a figure like this but yeah they killed it with the articulation all things considered and for the accessories we get a bunch of cool stuff you know it's always nice to get extra hands and weapons but the thing that's really cool is the fact that he comes with different sets of feet so that you could change things up and kind of change the design of the character so that is always awesome speaking of the feet i think zesray studios has gotten a lot better with the you know how easy it is to interchange things the first zesray studio figures i had the feet looked like they were supposed to come off but i couldn't get them off i had to heat them up and all kinds of stuff but with the more recent things i'm able to just pop stuff apart and it works out pretty good so his feet come off really easy it's you know it's very it's very simple to switch out the feet so that's always nice but yeah man i think this is a really really dope figure and i just love the design and you know the comic artwork on the packaging makes me love the design more because when i see the artwork on the box i'm like damn what's the story behind this you know and being that i don't know anything about these characters i like to have stuff like this because you kind of start making up your own stories and that's always fun and yeah man 
I like it. I like this guy quite a bit. It's going to look dope on the shelf along with the black minotaur that I have from Zest Ray Studios. And I would love to see them do more monsters and bigger unique bodies. They kill it with the gladiators and stuff, but these things right here are on a different level. So hopefully Zest Ray Studios leans into more of this stuff because this thing is amazing. If you're interested in getting this figure, you could pick it up at LA Comic Con. It is a LA Comic Con exclusive. That's happening this December. They have some other really cool exclusives that I'm hoping to get my hands on. I don't think I'm going to be able to go to the convention, but I would love to get some of the things that they that they are going to have available. But yeah, if you're interested in this, that's where you could get it. Huge thank you to 5K Toys for sending this out to me to take a look at. You guys are awesome. I do appreciate it. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace. <laughs>